this year 2020 the worst year on record <laughs> this year i made a new year's resolution new year's resolutions well that feels like 10 years ago anyway this year <laughs> this year 2020 forest fires pandemic oh. i'm actually getting emotional about the fact that i had new year's resolutions for this year and then 2020 just came and said no um at the start of this year i made a whole bunch of resolutions and one of them was to thrift more let's jump into my thrift haul plus where how and why you can thrift I found a but she just ran out of the frame no. so we're trying to find trade in Notting Hill so we're gonna try and do a little bit of thrifting fingers crossed that I find something good ah! yes. Woohoo! this is like a Jean-Paul Gaultier bag 10 pounds okay they literally have these this one right here is by Kimchi Blue which stocks in Urban Outfitters there's also this one from Topshop that I like I don't know if I'll buy it Ten bigger this one's really pretty. Mm. Oh. Goodbye, Rose. This is so fitting because we came from Camden and it reminds me of Amy Winehouse in Camden. Huh? Yeah. And I go back. <laughs> yeah. We go to the other one. It's literally just down the road. Guys, it's been the hottest day of the year so far and it's literally starting to rain. Okay, they're closed, but anyway, that's the Octavia Foundation. Just found this place as we were walking to the train station. It's really cute inside, everything's colour coordinated. Yeah, we didn't get to look very much though. We looked for like, what, five minutes? Yeah. Guys, we just got done at Tottenham Court Road. This vintage store is having a vintage sale. Oh, you dropped your receipt. Oh, that. much appreciated. There we go. Hi guys, it's Lana here. Welcome back to Lana Summer Summer Time. <laughs> On this channel, I share my tips with my curl friends to help you get your best curls and your best life. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, then subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications. Sorry if my face looks weird and puffy. Over here, I've got a toothache going on. Over here, I had to wake up at the crack of dawn so that I can start filming before my room turns into an absolute furnace. And I am drinking coffee. It is hot coffee on a hot day I, don't ask me why <laughs> so i want to talk about where you can thrift i get questions all the time where's the best places what's the best vintage shops and what i'm about to say might actually surprise you do not go thrifting at vintage shops <laughs> i mean you do if you have the money then do but that's the difference the thing with vintage shops is that they tend to actually sell a curation of items meaning that somebody has expertly gone through the bags and bags and sacks and sacks of clothes to find things and then quite often they thrift flip or they do repairs so that can get expensive but if money's not really an issue for you when you're thrifting then go ahead and shop at the vintage stores if you are trying to do this to save money then avoid the vintage shops go to the charity shops or the chaza shops as one of my subscribers called it i love that phrase there's honestly so many places where you can thrift in person you can go to a boot sale you can go to a secondhand market and then some of you are asking where i personally find my charity shops and yes some of these items are from charity shops in central london but most of these items i found in charity shops in my hometown i think almost every town in the uk probably has at least one charity shop that you can shop at the added benefit of shopping at a charity shop is of course that your purchases are essentially a donation to charity i was about to say i can't think of a charity that's bad but then there's charities that literally support like trump's campaign and stuff like that like i don't know <laughs> don't be shopping at those charity shops like just shop at the, the good charities okay so if you want some advice where to go in london specifically we had a quick look around camden but a lot of those shops were vintage shops and everything was quite expensive around camden so we decided to head over to Notting Hill. Notting Hill is not the only area in London that has charity shops, of course, 
but it is a very wealthy area of London, which means that the donations that get brought in to the charity shop are often high end, designer, high quality, and because they're charity shops, it means they can't inflate the prices very much, which means the ding, 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 that that is a hotspot for finding a bargain. So in Notting Hill, we went to Trade, which is very popular and famous. They actually have a trade in Camden as well, but I think their one was closed when we had a look. Around the corner, literally like a two minute walk away, you have the Octavia Foundation. How else can you thrift? Online, my darlings. It doesn't always have to be in person, especially seeing as we are in the midst of a pandemic and maybe you still don't feel comfortable to go out to shops, even though the shops have opened up ebay and depop those are my two favorite places to thrift online of course you can go over to somewhere like etsy and find some vintage items again they're likely to be curations and i do find that etsy is a bit more expensive because of that the vibe on ebay is much more like i bought this and it didn't fit me do you want it if you want it you bid on it you win it you get it i see it i like it i want it I got it. The thing over on Lana Summer, I want you to win. I want you to win the eBay bid as well. So my pro tip, I think a lot of people know this already, but my pro tip for eBay is you have to kind of be watching the bid. If it's something that you really want, you can disappear. Like you don't even have to watch the bid. You can disappear all week. Come back like a minute before that bid ends. Come back a minute before that bid ends. About 10 seconds before that bid ends. Put in your bid make sure it's the highest bid put it in 10 seconds before and watch yourself win something that i love about depop is that you can actually communicate with the sellers and it's almost like your friends is a bit like dming someone on instagram and they're always really happy to help so let's also talk about why i'm thrifting thrifting is more affordable and it means that you can dress in a more unique style and the third reason which has really spurred me on to thrift this year in particular is climate change and sustainability. Fast fashion and fashion in general has a huge impact on the environment, but that's definitely what spurred me on to do more thrifting this year and onwards really, and to just be trying to wheel down my wardrobe, wear my clothes more, make use of the washing machine, and make sure that I am shopping responsibly and passing my clothes on responsibly. Okay, so I feel like I rambled on for a really long time, but now we're onto the exciting part of the video where I'm gonna show you what I actually thrifted for this season. Okay, so I'm gonna show this one first just because it doesn't really fit in with the rest in terms of how I bought it and when and why and stuff like that. So the first item is actually this oversized baggy tee with like the long sleeves. I love t-shirts that have the sleeves that go down to your elbows. It just feels so boxy. I feel, I feel so comfortable wearing it. It's just a vibe. This one is actually from the University of Berkeley in California, I think. I don't actually know whether this is like an official t-shirt from the college's merchandise or anything, but I actually picked this up from a garden sale like a front yard sale what do you guys call it a yard sale i guess it was a yard sale in hawaii i don't know how much i must have paid for this like a dollar it's a nice thick high quality shirt you know it has that crisp texture to it which gives an extra oomph to that boxiness when i wear it i really like this shirt it's not see-through the next item is something that i picked up from one of my local charity shops is this blazer dress from wallace i know that it's not some poor quality fast fashion brand Brand. It's actually like a high street brand. It's got a good reputation. So while I was in the shop, I just googled how much do these usually sell for um, just to get a feel of what I can expect from the quality and how long it will last and that kind of thing. And I think that these usually sell for about 45 or 50 pounds in the shop. So I'm pretty sure I saw it on sale for about three or four pounds. I just love the color. I think this is a color that doesn't really go out of style too often. I love wearing these muted tones these neutrals these beiges especially in the summertime and this whole this whole thing like it's so nice you can wear it as an oversized blazer you can wear it as a dress i actually bought this in a size 12 i'm usually like an 8 to 10 but i really liked the fit of the 12 on me is it called milk tartar or shell buttons i love the detailing on this i love the rib fabric it's heavy enough to look high quality but it's light enough that you can wear it in the summer i just love that item from wallace and that was a local charity shop 
buy. I want to show you another local charity shop buy. Honestly, I feel like shopping at your local charity shop is probably the best way to go in thrifting. I just love the feeling that I'm actually giving to charity at the same time. This is actually my newest edition. I bought this like two days ago. I was so excited when I found this because I've been looking for something like this for a really long time. This one is actually by Zara. It feels like a high quality item. It has this double layer so that you can, you know, you can close everything up in there. It actually opens up quite wide. It has this huge, beautiful pom-pom right there. These wooden handles and this strong, sturdy filling strap. It was £2.50. £2.50 in my local charity shop. And it looks like it hasn't ever even been used. The next item was one of those Notting Hill high-end West London charity shop finds. This was actually from Trade. You saw it in the clips from me and Tasmin. It is the Ted Baker summer dress. So even though our shops are open at the moment with the pandemic that's currently going on, they are still not opening up in rooms, I think in most stores. So you can't actually try anything on. However, um, I saw that it's a size four. And at first I was like, oh, it's a size four. That's not gonna fit me. But any of my US followers that are watching, a size four in the UK is your your size is zero. But then I like held it up and I was like, hang on, that's gonna fit me. Me and Tasman, we do this thing where we're like, you think I'm skinny? <laughs> Ted Baker thinks I'm skinny. It looked like it was gonna fit. So I was like, okay, yeah, we'll take it home. Cause we were thinking maybe it's an American size four, which would make it a UK size eight. I took it home, I tried it on and I was like, that's too big though. Why is it so big? Ted Baker, somebody answer the question. I don't know. I just kind of had to figure that maybe it was designed to be oversized and flowy and soft and have this fairy tale vibe to it and just be very soft and floaty and woodland-esque. So I love that asymmetric detail. This side has the thin strap with the ribbon. This side has the thick strap with the same fabric that follows through to the rest of the dress, which I absolutely love. And at the back, it's secured with another little bow right there. The front is so Y2K because they actually use little diamantes. Like I feel like we stopped using diamantes as soon as like 2005 or something like that. So to see the little diamante buttons right here, that's cute. This one was $24.99. I actually came home, my mum was like, well, that wasn't much of a bargain, was it? <sighs> Trust the process. Trust the process. It's high quality. It's going to stand the test of time. It means that when I'm done with that, when I've outgrown it or when the trend dies down, I can sell it again and there's going to be a market for it again and it's still not going to go to landfill. So that's why I like to shop those and labels. When I tell you I am obsessed with thrifting right now, I bought these next few items today. So that's why they didn't make it into the main bulk of the video. But the first dress I found in Cancer Research UK, it actually still had the original Nasty Gal tags on it. So I'm going to assume it was never even worn. And I bought this for four pounds and those four pounds went to Cancer Research UK. It's such a nice feeling, but the dress itself is absolutely stunning. Oh, it just looks so nice. And I'm so happy that I found that today. My tooth is killing me, but this actually made me feel quite happy for a while. So I also picked up this sporty looking grey ribbed button up dress. This was originally from Zara, but I picked it up for just £4. And then I was in the next charity shop, the British Heart Foundation, and I found this amazing light summer jacket. It's the perfect style for me. It's cropped, it's boxy. I just love the look of it. It's actually corduroy when you look up close. It's a very soft material and it's originally from Miss Selfridge, but I picked it up from the British Heart Foundation for three pounds. Okay, so now let's talk about those online sellers. I got this dress. Oh. <gasps> It's so pretty, even on camera. This is like my favorite dress in the world. And I hate to say it, it's from Misguided. Like, okay, like I don't hate Misguided. Like I don't hate their clothes and things. They did steal my designs and to not credit me and I didn't get my coin. And I actually stumbled at one point and I did make a big order on Misguided because I wanted all of these milkmaid style dresses and I wanted a new look for the summer. So I actually put in a big order at Misguided. And when the delivery came, my sister was like, Lana, did you shop at Misguided? And I was like, eh, yeah. And she was like, you told me not to shop there because they stole your designs. And I was like, oh yeah. This exact same dress was in that haul of things that I got from Misguided. I tried everything on. Um, I loved the dress so much, but then my conscience was getting to me and I was like, I can't actually 
keep these dresses so i actually returned all of them I actually jumped onto ebay and i was like misguided white milkmaid dress size 8 bam this exact same dress turned up the one that i liked the most from the haul somebody was literally selling it brand new still with tags never been touched never been worn i bought that and it came and i've been loving it i feel like an absolute dream while i'm wearing it this one i actually didn't get much cheaper than the original price i think the original price was like 19.99 and i got it for 17.99 carrying on that theme of online sellers this next item is from depop it's a pair of trainers they're actually stan smiths by adidas and i think i paid about 19.99 for them for a long time with footwear i used to just buy low quality footwear the sort of stuff that had no support it literally ruined the way that my feet look and how my feet actually work my mum would always say those are going to fall apart and i'd say it doesn't matter if they fall apart like they cost three pounds who cares if they fall apart you know and it's only just been like recently i've started to realize like how kind of messed up that is like there are people in the world whose lives are being directly affected by the chemicals and the gases that are released when they're making these low quality items who are being directly affected by the landfills that they're also ending up in there's people whose lives are being directly affected by my choices to shop and buy these cheap shoes and then just throw them away like it's so easy to think like when you've thrown it away it's so easy just to imagine that it's just disappeared and it hasn't like it really hasn't disappeared it's gone somewhere and there is someone dealing with that now so i decided let me just go with the adidas let me just get like a, a pair that's just a higher quality I didn't even pay the full price. I paid like $19.99 because they're secondhand. Um, the girl was a really nice seller though. Stan Smith's a really popular type of shoe. They're all over Depop. They're high quality. They last a really long time and they've stayed in style for a really long time as well. So if you need a new pair of like white plimsoll type of trainers, a bit like this, then definitely jump onto Depop. There's so many on there. Some people think it's kind of gross to wear somebody else's shoes, but honestly, just give them a good clean. Like that is what cleaning supplies are for. Oh, I have one more tip for Depop. Don't just go in guns blazing buying everything. You have to read the descriptions because some people are really sneaky on there. They'll list something that looks amazing, sounds amazing. You've been looking for it for ages, like the Nike skirt, right? There's a Nike tennis skirt, the Nike victory skirt. I've wanted it for a while. I saw it, I was like, oh, I want it. She's selling it for a dollar. Ciao, no. They're not selling it for one dollar. Read the description. They say this item costs like $200. If you buy it for one dollar you won't be refunded so they're just there collecting like one dollar at a time to say no you won't be refunded because you should have read the description it's scam behavior honestly so just make sure you're aware of that before you just start buying willy-nilly on depop so yeah that is my little thrifting haul i really hope that you enjoyed it i know it's been a little while since i've been saying i'm gonna make this video but i'm so happy that i finally have and i've really enjoyed making this video because it's something i'm really quite passionate about at the moment i don't know if you can tell by the way that i'm like going a million miles a minute despite having a toothache and it being really hot like a furnace and my face is melting and my eyes are puffy and all of this uh -huh. uh. Yeah, if you would like to see me making another thrifting video then definitely hit like if there was anything in this video that you didn't like then hit dislike and let me know in the comment section what you thought of the video because all feedback is good feedback in my opinion also subscribe to my channel if you want to learn how to get your best curls and your best life because i'm out here trying to get us to all win get me on instagram for the blessings and the breakdowns because i put it all on there and i'll see you in the next video bye yeah.